Hello. Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. We are on episode 17 of If This Canvas Could Talk. And I'm excited. We're having a special guest on today um, from Canada, a Canadian artist. And um, let me get my friend Terry to come on, but we're episode 17 of If This Canvas Could Talk. Because <laughs> I can't see, because I'm inviting you. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hello. hello. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Hi. I was trying a new setup with my camera, um, too, and um, it, I keep switching it around on what I'm doing. <laughs> well, and it's hard because, like, later you watch the uh, feedback or the replay. Um, yeah, the replay. Thank, thank you. And, um, and then half your head's cut off, you know. So it's like, ah, trying to get yourself in the screen because, and then when we bring uh, Tamara on, it'll be even, even split. So, anyway, yeah. good morning. Well, hi. 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 So, <sighs> we're excited. Um, this is going to be episode 17. Seems like yeah. they're flying by. Yeah. <laughs> but they we, are. we have a Canadian artist joining us, abstract artist, um, Tamara, uh, Tamara Reed. Oh, what am I saying? Not Tamara Reed. That's Barbara Reed. Hi, Barbara Reed. <laughs> We're, <laughs> I wish it's on. <laughs> we, I'm tongue tied this morning. We are going to have Tamara Grand on. And she is our Canadian artist that we're having on today. And we're so excited to have her on. She does abstract and um, collages. And mm -hmm. we're so excited. Hi, Barbara Reed. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Good to have you watching. Um, I don't see her yet. I thought her when we first went on, but maybe she went off. Okay. All right. I don't see her yet. But today... Um, we're going to talk to her about art. Oh, hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about what Tamara is doing with an art re residency, which I think I, I watched. Um, oh, there she is. Okay. Let me invite her on now so we can let her talk since I haven't done that before. Okay, Mrs. <laughs> Tamara, I'm inviting you. Yay. I'm Hi. here. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Jeanette. How are you guys doing today? We're good. Fabulous. We're so good. excited to chat with you. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks a lot for having me on. And congratulations on episode 17. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> so those of you guys who don't know, Tamara and, um, and Barb's live that they do were the inspiration for us to start our lives they started it in the uh, after the pandemic and they did just as friends it was casual it was fun and so we i got inspired by it and i was like okay we've got to do this too because it just looks so much fun and you're getting to talk to other artists and so you were our inspiration for that. Aww. But um, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody for those of, uh, of anybody following who don't already know you. Um, I think I met you through watching, again, um, watching, um, I think it was through um, Jody King. Oh, maybe. I love Jody King. Yeah. 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 I think. That's when we started talking. I'm trying to remember when we started talking, but regardless, let's tell everybody <laughs> <laughs> what your, a little bit of your history and um, how you um, got to doing the abstracts that you're doing now. Sure, sure. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, you can find me on Instagram, Tamara Grand Art. And the show that I do is with Barbara Reed called No Brush Required. And I think it's hilarious that so I could I could be called Tamara Reed and she could be Barbara Grand now. We could we could switch names like that. I think that's a great idea. 
<laughs> I know, I probably don't got time to with that. That's all right. Um, I live in Port Moody, British Columbia, which is uh, just outside Vancouver in Canada. Anybody who's been to the West Coast, I know you guys are both West Coasters as yeah. well. Right? Uh, yeah, arty on, says Barb. Um, and so I've been painting for about six years now. So my background is not in art at all. Um, I have uh, graduate degrees in biology. So I was a biological researcher for many, many years. And that was my previous job. And then I had kids and my family was busy. And I took a bit of a break from that and started working in the fitness industry and created an entirely new career for myself um, that included online marketing and online courses. And uh, then the pandemic hit and I was kind of looking for something else to do. And I'd been sort of dabbling in art um, locally for the last couple of years, taking a couple of classes at, a, at our Pomo Art Center, our local art center. And um, I signed up, I, I watched all of Nick Wilton's Creative Visionary program lead up and I wasn't quite ready to pull the trigger on that program. This was early 2020. Um, and then I found Louise Fletcher oh. through, through CVP. Okay. Is that where we met? I don't know. I don't think, I think we met before then because okay. I think you told me about Louise okay. Fletcher. Sorry. Yeah. So Louise, Louise Fletcher is, um, is a, is a British artist, but also really a phenomenal art teacher. That's, that's really not that her paintings aren't wonderful, but her skill set is really in getting people who are not necessarily trained as artists to feel like they can be competent and just have fun painting. Mm -hmm. So I, I took her, I took some free courses with her, took her online 10 week course, and um, then just kind of expanded my realm and my house to bigger and bigger studio space. <laughs> It takes over. It, it <laughs> does. It absolutely does. Um, yeah. And most recently, so I'm an empty nester as of about six weeks ago. And so I've taken over the rest of the room that I share with my, I shared with my 18 year old who's gone off to college. And then my 23 year old, 24 year old who lives in the room next to me moved out about six weeks ago. So I'm kind of expanding. I'm kind of taking over the whole lower level of my house. <laughs> That's I love it. it. That's amazing. It is. As, as long as they have a place to sleep when they come home, I think that's all they need. Uh, you don't right, need to have a whole room. Right now, he doesn't have a bed in that room, but oh. you know, he's not coming home till Christmas, so we're good. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> just, the art kicks over. It does. It's good, and and um, I I love being home um, to work. I don't know if you guys are both. Are do you have home studios yeah. or do you have studios outside the house? Well, you do. Yeah. yeah, and um, I did put a, a bigger wall in my spare room, but normally I've been painting on my kitchen table. <laughs> That's how I so, started. That's how yeah. I started. Watercolors at the kitchen table, and then on a small table, and then a bigger table, and then a wall, <laughs> and then a floor, and then a room. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I have a wall. So I have a wall and the kitchen table. Oh, isn't the wall a game changer? Yeah, it's yeah, better. It's, I want it bigger. I think yeah. bigger paintings that way. Well, it's so much more ergonomic too. So my, you know, my other job is in fitness and health. And so a big part of it is trying to keep your body. I'm thinking a lot about keeping my body um, comfortable and mobile sure. and strong to be able to spend longer times in my studio. So ergonomics is really yeah. key. Yeah, well, standing mm -hmm. and painting. I think the other day I stood and painted for like five hours. Yeah. So my, wow. my feet were tired after that. And then I know with yours, um, um, it, it's, it's also bending over. Yes. Doing the bending over is also a problem. Yeah, it is, especially, and then when you're working on small things, I struggle with that, right, Terry? Like, you know, you can put, I can put a, even a 12 by 12, I can put on my wall. My wall works for that. But anything smaller, you can't hang it. And you kind of have to be down and over it to to, right. to, to work it properly with smaller tools, right? Yeah. Well, And mine are water, so they have to be flat. So oh, unless you like I just drips. recently, I raised, I put them up on tables, and that helps my back a lot. And somebody messaged me and was like, I'm super concerned with your back, with you on the floor like that all the time. Like, that is not... Uh, feasible long term right. and I thought you're right because at the end of the day I could really feel it yeah. and so raising it helped a lot well standing desks are great for that because you can move them up and down and I know Barb mentioned a couple weeks ago on our show that um, she bought some high trolleys like 
kitchen. Um, I think they're mm-hmm. from, from a store, a company called Uline that will make like industrial yes. kitchen uh, storage cabinets and that are much higher so she can stand all day and work. Yeah. Well, I think everybody that's joined us live and Tamara, the, 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 one of the main reasons we wanted to have you on too is you're doing a stay at home art residency. So we want to hear all about that because I don't know anything about art residencies. I watched your and Barb's show um, with the artist that you had on that did that one in Paris or in France. Yes. Um, at a chateau, which sounds like a dream for me, where all you do is paint and they supply the food and you just go back and yeah. forth to your studio. Like to me, that is a dream vacation. Tell me about or, it. Or, it. But it's not a vacation, it's residence. But it so is. You're working on your art. I mean, it's like all rolled it up is. in one. I mean, it's vacation it and play and work and it's like the best of all worlds. It's yeah. true. It's true. If I could get my husband to, you know, make the meals and bring them yes. down here to me and serve me, and that would be, yes. then I could make this really, <laughs> really just <laughs> a vacation art residency. Good morning, Douglas. I see a few friends. Hi, Douglas. Hi. Um, so uh, let me, let me just go back a little and tell you about why I decided to do it. I, I knew nothing. I know very little about art residencies. And when I heard about Joanne Godmere's, I was like, oh, I'm doing this all wrong. But <laughs> it's working for me. Um, I, I was starting to feel a little bit burnt out working part time and taking care of kids part time and only getting into my studio part time yeah. and feeling like I really needed to get deeper a deeper dive. And like I was only scratching the surface and I was only just getting so far with the things that I wanted to do you know you know how that is like you you really get you get sucked into something and then oh I gotta go make dinner I gotta drive somebody here oh I have to go teach a class and so I wasn't getting those big expanses of time that I felt like I really needed to make progress I was making lots of art but it didn't feel like it was getting better or I didn't not that better is the goal but I didn't feel like I was digging as deeply as I wanted to everything was you know quick, done, move on, not spending as much time with things as I wanted. And I wasn't making my, my skills weren't getting better. Mm. So um, I, I started thinking about whether or not I might be able to have a little bit, carve out a little more time for myself um, and ways I might do that. And my husband and I, he's an academic, so he totally understands the idea of a sabbatical, which he gets every seven years, oh. um, you know, seven years away from the university, no teaching, no admin, you go and you do research and you would do a deep dive and maybe you go someplace new, maybe you stay at home. We never traveled for his because our kids were too small and it's expensive to travel with a family when the kids are little, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. we decided that why not, why didn't I take a sabbatical? Why don't I just call this a sabbatical and take a six month leave from my other responsibilities and see what might happen. And I kind of was on the fence for a little while because, you know, you feel responsible, the things that you're doing for other people, people will miss me. Um, You know, I'm feeling guilty because this is so, this is all about me and I'm giving up income for six months to do this. And I don't know where it's going to lead and all that sort of stuff. Um, But then I went on a a workshop in New York city with Barb and some other friends. And we went to uh, a workshop with um, uh, American artist, Robert Zott. And I was com- the whole week, the whole week I was just vibrating. Yeah. Like I was just feeling like I was in the middle of doing something that I felt really, really lit up about. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't felt like that in a long time. And, you know, as Louise says, as, as Nick Wilton says, find what you love and do more of it. And so I came home from that and I thought, yes, this, this needs to happen. This feels like the right time. This is the right push. So I uh, let everybody at work know I was going to take a six month sabbatical and it was perfect timing because my annual certifications were coming up at the end of December. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put a pause on it. Nobody can, I won't be tempted to go back. Nobody can call me and say, can you come in and teach a class? Can you do this? I'll be like, nope, certifications are lapsed. I can't do it. And uh, I decided to spend six months at home in my own studio, just painting what I wanted to paint and following the threads that I was really excited about. Um, so I know with a lot of art, st- art residencies, people go in with a plan, you know, if you, Joanne was talking about some where you have to actually write a proposal for what you're going to do. You know, there's a certain body of work you want to mm-hmm. create, or there's a course you're going to take. And I thought about that and I decided for me, the better thing was to go in with no expectations and to let myself drift and explore and spend as much or as little time on the things that were exciting me and move on from them without any pressure to complete anything or sell anything or, um, yeah, by the end of it. Just kind of having a 
that's my, that's my goal. So have, having faith that doing more of what I love and allowing myself to take the, the end game away from it is going to be exactly what I need to do for this six months. Mm. Well, we've, we've talked about that too, like the freedom and not being um, attached to the outcome yes. is huge. It, yes. it allows you to not worry about what it's going to be. If you end up having to paint over it, it doesn't matter because, and then it just gives you that freedom. But to have that dedicated time and to not worry about having to go to work yeah. or, yeah, I think that is like so special and amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, it's not like I didn't, I don't have any, it's not like I don't have any um, focus. I do have focus. Some of the things I wanted to do during this time was spend more time figuring out uh, and applying for local exhibitions oh. and mm -hmm. galleries and, and because I hadn't been doing that because there was no time. It was the bottom of the list right. to spend time on that research. So that's been part of what I've been doing is finding those places and that's been successful so far. I've, you know, I've had some shows this, some things accepted into shows this um, spring already and um, yeah it's That's been great. great so far so when you looked for shows to apply to did you just go online and look for your local galleries or was it yeah associations or? well it's that but just I you know what it's like it's like when you see you, you remember the car the gremlin Nobody ever had, yeah. there were hardly any gremlins yeah. around. But yeah, right, yeah. Once somebody said, um, you know, look for orange gremlins, everywhere you see an orange gremlin. Okay. So I wasn't thinking about galleries, online galleries, online shows, local shows. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't front of mind. And as soon as I placed it there, all of a sudden it's showing up on my Instagram feed. I'm noticing friends where they're showing. I'm following those links. I'm, I'm checking those sorts of things out that I wasn't doing before. Um, and I think part of it is, you know, it's, I don't know, do you guys, I, I, do you guys show your work? Well, t t Terry, you, you, yes. Terry has got a new oh, show. Oh, that's right. That, that's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just got into the Best of the Northwest Art Fair, and so I'm preparing for that now, and I just laid a, a whole lot of canvases down so I can, each week I'm trying to get, you know, play, and remember to play, like you're saying, like, because there's that pressure now of, yes. that I have to have some things to show and to sell, um, and so balancing all of that, but yeah, so this will be my first time being out in public with any of my art. So, and, and well, I guess it's I had great. one pop up. So that was that. Yeah. And yeah. So I'm going to ask you, cause this is how I felt. I think part of the reason of, that some of us don't apply or we're, we're hesitant to start applying or we, we tell ourselves I'm not interested in that is because it's really a hard and scary thing to do, to put your work out there, to be you know, juried by somebody else to pay a fee. Some, a lot of the shows have admission fees. Yeah. And if you, if you're going into it feeling like your work's not going to be accepted. Um, and so the good thing is the more you practice that muscle, the easier it gets. Sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, like Terry had to work on her art statement and all that stuff. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm so far behind. I have to do that. But by putting yourself out there and doing those things, those are the things that you end up having to do. And then you have them in your, in your back pocket, you'll have right. that figured out or you adjust it and change it. Um, yes. I, I had another question for you though, Tamara, when you were saying that you were doing the research for the shows and entering into shows. So have you like set time, um, set times or set days when you do certain things while you're doing this? Uh, well, so that's a good question because part of this six months for me was trying to figure out what my, how my energy is during the day and when I need to be doing different things. Ah. And so when I was working, mm -hmm. I, I, I was teaching fitness classes, back-to-back -back fitness classes in the morning, which is creatively taxing, physically taxing. I come home at lunchtime and I have the afternoon to paint, but I'm too tired creatively. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to figure that out. You know, when's the, when, when, am, when am I at that, my creative, create my highest creative point in the day and how can I capitalize on that so I don't want to use that time of the day to be doing internet searching for shows and things like that so if I'm online if I'm online if I'm scrolling Instagram and things are I'm, things are popping up I don't necessarily chase them down at the moment I'll stick them in a uh, I save a lot of things on in my save folders uh -huh. to come back to later and then that'll often be later in the day work so for me I still like to exercise first thing in the morning um I go out to the gym usually, I go for a walk, come home, put on the kettle, come down to my studio usually by 9.30 or 10 and then spend a few hours here. And then I often find by lunchtime after lunch is time when I can do other things like 
doing the searches for shows, doing some online stuff. Yesterday was working on taxes, oh. which I hate. Yeah, so like a little bit of time. I know some people like to have an admin day, and I've tried that before. And for me, I find that doesn't work because the way I work as an artist is I work in a lot of layers with my paintings. Mm -hmm. And so I might do half an hour of really in, you know, really close up work with things. And then I need to walk away for half an hour while things dry to the point that I can go back in and start working on them again. Um, so that that's a good time to go for a walk or change the laundry or, you know, troll yeah. Instagram to find and some more studio or exhibitions to, to apply to and that sort okay. of thing. That's great. So you're dividing up your days versus uh, the yes. times in your day versus separate days. Yeah. And then I, I find I have to paint in the morning um, to early afternoon because of I'm using natural light. I don't have right. really good lighting. So that kind of limits me. So it's the evening. But um, but I don't have the full dedicated six months that I'm so jealous of. And then I wanted to ask you, this is a side note, your jelly bean paintings. Yes. So did that come from this or was that, did you do that before? That's all new. Okay. That's all new. So that is all sort of part of the exploration that started for me in New York with new colors and new shapes and some new techniques. And that's what I've just been working like crazy on. And just, it's evolving. There's new things happening with it. I've been combining more collage pieces, paper pieces with the, the panel pieces. And those are, I have a lot of work done and I'm not quite ready to share it yet because I don't know how to talk about it yet. Okay. <laughs> you know okay. how that is sometimes when you make work and you love it and you're like, where did that come from? What I does that mean? And I need to have something to say about it, but I'm not sure what it is yet. Well, one of them you just did or is in one of it's going to be in the show that yes. you just posted about so yes. i was like i love those jelly pea paste Some, something about them just makes me so happy when i look at them that and that's how i feel and my family's so funny like they call my my family or we're biologists right so my husband calls them paramecium um <laughs> my son calls them bacteria <laughs> I love it. But I you know what? It. I don't really care. No. I mean, I like the shapes. The shapes are very organic and they're very natural and they're what comes to me when you put a, you know, a one inch paintbrush in my yes. hand. So. Well, and what are you most in, I know you mentioned this in your, um, about me, but you, um, mostly are influenced by nature and by being outside. Because you love yeah. to go out, you love to do that too. So I do, but I I also feel like that needs an update because I feel like as of late the work is not so much inspired by anything outside as as it is inspired by itself. Okay. If that makes sense, the mm -hmm. materials. And so when I started painting, um, a lot of my work was very uh, abstract landscape in nature. Like you could see that horizon line, and and I do a lot of hiking. And you know we live in a beautiful part of the world up mm -hmm. here, in the mountains okay. and oceans, and a lot of my the first work that I started sharing was all about that. And then I've started moving away from that and just being less, less, uh, trying, less worried about it, trying to look like anything that anybody else will recognize. Uh, how freeing is that? Because Jeanette and I have this conversation a lot um, mm -hmm. about both of us moving into those spaces of, of our art, nodding, less to looking like something and more to just shapes that are represented to it was the word that represent what in our mind what you know her for landscape me for floral but it's not necessarily floral and I feel like I'm just starting to for me personally I'm just starting to kind of get into the cusp of that but then I struggle with still trying to make it look real so people will know what it is but you have to get to and I look forward to getting to the space where I just don't care at all what anybody else thinks about any of it it's just what I want to do and move from there which sounds like that's part of your goal of doing your sabbatical and I heard you say a few minutes ago like what your family was calling your jelly bean art and you're like I don't care I like it and and that's all that matters and then yeah. you can grow from there yeah yeah and you know shapes are just a way of exploring other things right shapes are just a way of exploring color and in my case I'm really interested in transparency and depth yeah. and so <clears throat> and I like the hard edges that I can create um, with the edge of my brush and how those can kind of shine through the layers that you put on top of it. And yeah. um, I mean, one of the things about 
uh, that one of the challenges though, the, the less representational, representational your work is, the harder it is to know when it's done. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. I, I tell, yeah. people, tell people that all the time that abstract art is so much harder and takes so much more time to get it right it really than just so a, does. a yeah. photo or trying to paint a something. I mean, realistic painters are amazing. Like, I'm not even anywhere near realistic. And I'm of course, not yeah. abstracting as much as I want to be. And I feel like doing a residency is really something that I really want to do because I feel like I need I, and I talk to Terry about this a lot I'm on I know where I want to be <clears throat> but I'm not there yet and mm -hmm. I know all that I need to do is just paint and paint yes. and paint and paint mm -hmm. yeah it's the 10,000 hours thing right like if you've all if you can if only have time to put in two or three hours a week then it's going to take you longer to make yeah. the mistakes and to you know so one of the things I've really noticed in the last few months is I have so much more um, knowledge about how my materials are working and how to, so, you know, before I would get a cool effect and I'd be like, oh, that's really cool. How the hell did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> and you forget. <laughs> and then, yeah. can I ever do that again? I can't right. ever do that again. Right. So, you know, you're chasing this thing that you did once, which, you know, maybe that's a good goal, but doing this, doing things over and over and over again, when you have a lot of time, you start to move things into um, into muscle memory. Yeah. So some of yes. it is, you know, when I use a lot of mediums in my work, and so how much medium versus how much paint. Mm -hmm. Some paint colors mm -hmm. and some types of paint actually require less medium to get the effect that I'm looking for. When I'm scrubbing back into my shapes, some paints like op I use a lot of open golden open paints some they take longer to dry which can be great but it can also mean if you're trying to scrub into previous layers you take the whole darn layer off if you don't oh, yeah. need it long enough so well, just sort of intuitively learning <clears throat> so you don't mm -hmm. have to so that you can you you can continue to make make these things and do these things without having to intellectualize every single step that you take you know you just yes. it becomes a sec second nature more well, that's what I find <clears throat> it can be more intuitive yeah Mm -hmm. um, and I find that so fascinating about those paintings that you're doing, the organic shapes, is all the layers. I just like, I'm like, I, when I first was looking at it, I was going, how in the heck is she doing that? Like, it's so cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, what is the difference between, what is open paints? Oh, um, so Golden has two different lines. Um, do you guys paint, you're painting watercolor and acrylic? Um, I'm just, I'm acrylic. I do acrylic and, and or a watercolor, okay. and then I splash acrylic in here and there. Okay, so standard sort of soft body or heavy body. I use golden paints in tubes and in jars. Looks like this, and it it, um, it tends to dry fairly quickly unless you put it in really thick layers. They have a smaller assortment of colors that have the designation open on them. Okay. You're seeing it backwards, yeah, I know. But I've seen those. But open just means slower drying. Oh. So it stays open uh, like an oil paint does oh. longer to allow you to blend and move it around. Oh. And I have read that you shouldn't mix them in the same painting and I don't care. I have no <laughs> formal training in art. So I don't, those rules don't apply to me. I'll just do what I want to do. Um, <laughs> I can hear and, and, Jody King. I can hear Jody yeah. King right now saying, you're not the boss of me. Yeah. The rules are suggestions yes. and yeah. I'm going to do what I want. Well, and I started buying these, some of these open ones because I like the color and I didn't had no idea there was a difference. And I, I, I kind of figured out the difference and then somebody told me, oh, that's what open means. I'm like, oh, of course, now I understand it. <laughs> so now you're learning how to use the ones that dry quicker and then the ones that stay open because you're, 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 I'm, I'm assuming you're sanding back between layers. Yeah, so I do a lot of kind of rubbing back, so removal of paint in a variety of ways, some with medium, some with water, some, you know, you put paint on and immediately, where you guys must have them, the blue shop towels. Yes. Oh, yeah, blue yeah shop towels immediately will take the top layer off so it'll be nice and you can get a you know a more of a thin glaze on after thicker paint um i do sand back sometimes as well not not usually in later stages usually that's an earlier stage i might start with like a whole bunch of crazy mark making and then um sand back just to get something to start with okay because you know how that blank canvas is a little i don't like yes. i don't like a white right. canvas i like something there i either start with splatters of collage or random color random blocks of color or um, most recently i did some 
it's not finished yet, but I, I took photographs. Uh, I do a lot of photographs of cracks in the sidewalk and yes. that sort of stuff like artists yes. do. And I got my husband to print the, a bunch of them out with the laser printer. And then I um, image transferred them onto the, the panel so that all the cracks and the lines and the gray shades were there before I started painting, just because I needed, I need something. I need something mm -hmm. before I put that first bit of paint, paint down. You should do a, you should do a, a, a live or a class on um, showing how to transfer onto canvas. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause that yeah. would be yeah. good to know too. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, whoops. I'm just getting texted someplace else. I thought I turned that off. Okay. And Barb then, said she's sticking her hand on it and re not realizing that part is quite dry. Yeah. That was that Barb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then G R Carter design says, um, that she hasn't, or he hasn't had any problems with mixing the open other than maybe sticking my hand on it. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Got and it. you know what? I've, it's funny because you very quickly learn like um, my favorite, I don't, I don't buy a lot of greens. My favorite green is golden's sap green hue. I love it. It makes the most gorgeous green. You can mix it with other things, but I have the open and it never dries. It's like, it's like oil paints. It's like three days later, it's still tacky. It's just that one color and I have no idea why it's so open. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, that but is that's the tonight. most fun about what you're doing too. And Tony and I just had this conversation over the weekend of him saying that what you were saying earlier, which is that you've got, you know, you've got to do, I tend to jump around cause I'm learning everything at this point. Right. Cause I'm just starting all of it. And so, um, but then I make almost everything I've made to this point is what you said of, I accidentally kind of made it, you know, like I did it and it turned out great. And then somebody's like, can you make me something like that? No, I can't because I don't even know how I did it to begin with. So, but he's like, just that muscle memory of, of doing it over and over and doing, finding the one thing and then keep doing that over and over and over again until you get it down to where you don't have to think about it anymore. And then you can slowly start adding yeah. these new techniques on top of that kind of base that you have. So now you have the time to figure all of that out and to put in the hours using all of the, I have a whole bunch of different mediums that I bought because I thought I needed them and, and I don't even know what they do. I've never even t had the time to, you know, play yeah. with them and figure it all out. So that's another blessing that comes with having the time to, and, and no expectation of other than just playing and figuring out. Yeah. 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 But you know, I've made a lot of work, that, which is oh, great sure, too. Sure. Um, yeah. But, yeah, definitely. But that's just kind of a byproduct of it. So yeah. 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 Well, of course, the work is going to come from being able to play and try things and, and then go, okay, I've got to do that again. How did I do yeah. that? Try what I'd really, love, I'd really love at the end of this is to have a place to show all of oh. the progressions that, were, yeah. that I've made in this last six months. Um, oh, so, and I'm working on that. I'm working on that. I haven't got mm -hmm. anything announced, but I'm working on it. If you so if you get a space or have an open studio or something and then you line it up, oh my god, that would be so interesting. I love that yeah, idea. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, the way I'm working right now is one thing leads to the next, right? So you have a couple of pieces and you're trying some things, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, what if I try this? And so you, I try that on the next piece. And if you line them up, you could kind of see the you might be able to see how my thought process, <laughs> but so maybe cool. not. Oh, I might, I love it. I love it. Absolutely. That would make a great class, too. Yeah. I, and I, you know what? I you think know. The, the gift of time is really important. And this has come up in conversation a number of times with people, especially women our age. I'm going to put us all in the same age yeah. bracket. I think we're probably in we the same age yeah. bracket. But, you know, we spend, um, I, I'm late to art. I didn't do this before. I spent a lot of years taking care of people and not, I'm, I mean, I, I was the happiest part of my life was taking care of my kids and right. being mom and doing stuff with them. That was, I would never trade that. But, I didn't have time to pursue other passions and didn't have the money to pursue other passions. Mm -hmm. And now I do. And I have the time and I kind of feel like if not now, when, <laughs> because we don't have an infinite number of years on this planet, you know, what am I waiting for? Right. 
well, what am I waiting for? The pandemic did that for me and I was laid off from a job and I thought, okay, I, I'm constantly talking about how I see these artists on Instagram and I'm so jealous that that's what they're doing and they're doing their art. And I said, well, then now I have no excuse because I don't have a job to worry about. Right. I, and not that I wanted it, did, but didn't want a job, but, and then the pandemic. And so I was like, okay, I've got to start. I just yeah. have to start. I had yeah. done art in between my whole life, but to really dedicate it and really make a go of it, I didn't, I didn't, hadn't done it before then. And Terry yeah, was I, sort of the same thing, but she came about it in a little bit different of a way. She stopped working and then she wanted to do something for her house, right? right. Mm -hmm. And, and I just, just made some random piece that one day I'll show that I have in our in our spare room that and I just was hooked from then I just I don't know it just that sparked something in me and then I just made another and then another and then it just caught, caught on and, and now she's I, blowing up she's gonna blow up yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah thank you my friend all of us are that's so but, exciting but we have to give ourselves space for that and we yes. have to say no you deserve this time and you know to be able to exp to explore and do these things and i think lots of people don't give themselves that so yeah so how um, how much so when when um like what's your time frame like what are you up yeah. to next? like give yep. us how long how long how far are you in it and how much longer oh, do you have? And... Uh, well, January 1st officially was official start. Okay. Um, and so, you know, technically, uh, when I left and said I was taking a six month leave of absence, I left it open ended um, because I was teaching a lot of classes and I and I said, you know, I give my classes away, don't hold on to them because people, well, you know, I work in a public facility, people get really attached to their instructors and their trainers mm -hmm. and the transition's hard and then they make the transition to a new person and the, the new person is their person now. So um, I didn't say I'm taking six months and I'm coming back and I want these classes. So I've left it a little bit open-ended and part of this time is for me to figure out how I want to integrate these things going forward. Together. So. Yes. With your art, yeah. So what do I want? So your art doesn't sacrifice. Exactly. So what do I need to do? What's the what's the right balance? The balance was off before. I need to figure out what the balance needs to be right now. So a big part of what I've been doing is figuring out what's my perfect day look like? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you know what your perfect day looks like, you know what your perfect week looks like, and then you scale it up and it's really the rest of your life, right? It's your perfect life. What do I need to have happen every single day to make me mm -hmm. feel good? Um, and some of that is actually being out in the world, helping other people. And I was doing that a lot as a, you know, in, as a fitness professional, I enjoy that. I enjoy being someone who's known in my community. I've been doing it for a long time. That gives me a certain amount of energy and high, but too much of it takes energy right. away. Sure. And, you know, leaves me prone to injury. I've had some injury issues in the last couple of years because I was never saying no, I was doing too much of all of that. So I'm just, I'm trying to be very, um, I'm not, Trying, I'm trying to not define the end of this period by what happens July 1st, but I'm trying to let it sort of evolve and pay attention to how I'm feeling and thinking about saying yes to things, but not everything. Um, so I don't have an answer for you yet, but there'll be some, there'll be some meshing of those things together. Yeah, that's awesome. It sounds like it's a good organic fit between you know, your normal art practice and a residency, it sounds like you're going to eventually evolve. Because my next thought was, um, now that you've done this at home, would you then, do you feel like you'll just keep doing that every now and then to where you dedicate a certain amount of time where you're just creating? Or would you think about going to a residency that's away somewhere? Well, I, I would love to. I would love to do a residency. What I would also really love and what... Um, I, what I enjoyed so much about New York City was just being around other artists, yeah. artist friends. And so not necessarily going away to focus on some, a specific goal around my art making, but being with people and going to art galleries and art museums and taking a workshop away from home. That was the highlight of that experience. It was all of those things that kind of came together for me. Um, I get lots of solo time. I don't, I don't need more solo time. 
um, and I love to travel. We're go I'm going to Italy next month. Yay. Uh, so, you know, my husband and I like to travel and we like to go places and I get to see lots of art wherever we travel. Um, so I'm more interested in an art vacation, an art girls trip yeah. Um, yeah. than, you know, an actual artist residency <laughs> right now. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Bar. But only for <laughs> three margaritas, Barb. Never four. Always never no to the four. Four. Oh my never God. four. Never four. And three is pushing it. Yeah. Three is like, oh, depending on how much food you've had, three might be okay, it might not be. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's my piece of advice. Always say no to number four. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's great. I love it. Yeah. I think a girl's art trip would be so fun. Yeah. And there's lots of opportunities for that. You know, um, there's, I don't know if you guys know Beverly Todd. She has an artist studio getaway in Santa Fe. And then Jen Tuff through the Artist Alliance is just um, opening a, a big space with like, I think it's got eight or 10 artist studios that you can rent for a week that are all in the same building associated with a gallery and exhibition just outside Santa Fe. So people, other artists are starting to realize, oh, this might be a good business model. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you could coordinate, you know, time like you guys could say, hey, let's go the same time. Let's book, a, each of us book a studio in this building for a week and then go and, you know, you rent an Airbnb, you have your holiday, you have your studio time, you go to the galleries, you go to the desert and hike or whatever, right? That sounds like heaven. Oh my God, that would be so fun. That's such a good idea. Mm -hmm. So who yeah, I think doing that again? I wanted to. Um, so I, that's Jen, Jen Tuff through the Artist Alliance. Okay. okay. You can find them on Instagram. And then um, Beverly okay. Todd is another artist whose name has come up for me. And she's got a place in Santa Fe and she has a small number of artist studios that are outside the city, I think, that you can rent. I've kind of looked at a variety of these to see whether they would be sort of a good fit for an event, like going away with a group of six or eight women friends oh, yeah. and having, you know, that sort of thing. That's great. So I was, um, I was typing them in for, thank you. okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm you did. Go, good. I'm going to go back it's and listen. It's T-U, I think it's T-O-U-G-H. Oh. Tough like rough. Oh, tough. Yeah, like she, she's tough. Yeah, okay. Jen Tough. Of course she is. <laughs> Okay, Jen Tuff. There and we go. I think her new space opens in May. Oh, wow. Great. Wow, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go, Terry. So, Thank you for typing so that there, in. There you go. Now that I've said all this, I'm going to get a bunch of <laughs> DMs yeah. saying, why don't you organize something? Why don't you plan an event? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You have to go to British Columbia. You know. Right. Yeah. Ah. Um, well, well, then um, I have so many more questions for you. You've helped us with, you've helped me with the tech, technical part of doing the lives. There's so many things that, you know, I want to talk to you more about, but um, what is it? Is there anything you would like to say before or tell us about anything that other than hopefully planning a show where we could see what you've done? Um, mm -hmm. And what else? Is there anything else you want to um, mention or? Well, it was Something else that I think is really a really great thing for artists to do, especially if you're emerging and you're working on your own a lot and you're not quite um, sure about how to get yourself out there in the world, because, you know, COVID was a really great time. I, I'm saying this in, you know what I'm, yes, you know what I'm sure. saying? Lots of people, yes, it wasn't yes. a great time, but, but it was a, it was a great time for us to be online and develop our artist communities because we had nothing else to do. We were stuck at home. We couldn't see our friends. Um, a lot of people didn't have the usual ways to spend their disposable income. So they were buying art supplies and art courses and paintings and all the rest of it. Right. Yes. So now now I'm finding, and I know a lot of other artists are finding that the world is opening up and we're not spending as much time online and our collectors aren't finding as much, spending as much time online and our communities are sort of, you know, they're still there, but people have lots of other things to do. So sure. getting out in the world is becoming more and more important. Um, and so what I've been doing, another facet of this six months is getting involved in my community a little bit more and trying to, mm -hmm. I, I, I use the phrase coming out because I'm known as a fitness instructor and a mom and I, you know, been active in my, we've lived in our community for almost 30 years. So it's small and I know a lot of people, but they don't know that I'm an artist. Oh. So I'm trying to make inroads in the local art community by volunteering for art events. So we have um, something called an art shuffle that we had a two year event before COVID and then nothing. So the, what it is, is it's an evening long event that um, coordinates 
um, businesses and artists in the community. And so it's a shuffle, meaning that it's all done within about six or eight square blocks of my town and are centered around the, the local art gallery, which is our art center for education as well. And businesses who support artists have artwork there, have displays on, and people get out of the, their cars and walk around for the evening. So we're trying to get this up and organized again first committee meeting wasn't until January. Normally we would have a full year to organize, but nobody knew what was going to happen last year. So, you know, whether we were going to be open this year. So that's been a really great way for me to get involved in that organizing committee, small committee of about eight people, getting to know the, the gallery manager better, getting to meet other artists in the community, getting invited to art dates and art events and things. Um, and it's going to be it's going to be fabulous, and I'm really really enjoying that aspect of putting myself out there and taking the skills that I've learned about organizing and communicating into another place. So I would encourage anybody who has the opportunity to you know volunteer in their community for these sort of local arts events to do it because it's a good way to step out and start to feel more comfortable in that community if you're not already. And art associations, that's on my goal for this year, is to get mm -hmm. into a few art associations as well, to have that yeah. community and that also find out yeah. more about the events. Because so in-person events are happening, right? That's We're, we're yeah. back to in-person events. Yeah. And so you got to get out there. you got to go to gallery openings. Yeah. Um, as scary as that sounds, <laughs> I, ha I have a hard time with going out at night. That's my biggest yes, challenge. In the winter, especially, once 6 o'clock rolls around, I'm going to yeah. be in my jammies on the couch. Don't, right? invite, me, don't invite me out. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm so sad. I need but, a yeah. brunch. Like, invite yeah. me to brunch. Yeah. I'm good. I'm home in the afternoon. I can still paint. And then jammies, yes, totally. But these things, but these things are all at night, right? Like, so yeah. an art opening is like seven to nine. You're like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. I just went to the Palm Springs last weekend, and there was an art opening that I went to that was a, a, a artist friend of a friend, and so I got to meet her and see her art, and it was really cool, and it was really a vibrant, you know, to be out and with all the people and the artists going around there, lots of galleries, so I could see the appealing part, and I think it's just like getting yourself geared up to, to go do it, and then once I'm there, it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? If you go with a friend, it always makes it easier, like... Yeah. I'm, I'm an extrovert, but I struggle being the person that walks into a room and doesn't know anybody too, yeah. just like everybody else does. So going mm -hmm. with a friend really does help because you have someone to like stand and have a beer yeah. with while exactly. you make chit chat with where you start to feel comfortable. Exactly. Well, you definitely have to let us know what you end up doing, you know, besides what we're, we're following. Everybody can find you on Tamara Grand Art on Instagram. Yep. And then you have your website and... Um, but we'll follow along and find out. And then you've got to let us know if you do end up doing like a big show and anybody in the British Columbia area can contact you and go to the show, which would Absolutely. be amazing. Amazing. Okay, great. Um, Terry, is there anything else we want to say before we, um, I don't know how long we've been on for. Let's see. Uh, oh. About, I checked uh, about five minutes ago. We were at, yeah, we're at, uh, fi about 50 minutes. So we're, we're good, but. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your sabbatical to chat with us, and I'm excited to, I've been following you for a while, I've learned about you through Jeanette, and um, love everything that you're doing, but now I feel like we're friends, and I, I get know. to cheer, and, and we finally got to right chat, yeah. yes, absolutely, and then whenever yes. I'm up in your neck of the woods, I will uh, definitely come by and say hi. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I really enjoyed chatting with you guys today. Thanks so much for having me on. And um, I'm, I love your show. Oh, you guys, you guys are great. We're, we're trying. trying a great job. We're, we're trying. We're evolving. We're, yeah. yeah. We yeah. do want to get some bigger artists on, like you had Nicholas Wilton on. And some. And so we'll have to change exchange notes about that. Like, how did you get him Just to come on? I know. Ask. Oh, Just really? ask people. The worst thing that can happen, and we've had this happen, people don't respond to us. Oh, well. Okay. Okay. But people, you know, people do. And um, I know it's hard when you feel like you're really reaching. But pe everybody's just, we're all people. We're all yeah. artists. Yeah. If, if people Ultimately. are online, they like to talk to artists. They're online. They talk to artists. They like to talk to you. So don't, don't okay. feel nervous about asking. Because the worst thing they can do is say no. Well, well that's True. why we did this. Because Terry and I wanted to share, like, share our journeys of 
kind of just starting out, like not being a fully established artist, but you know, what we're going through and what we're learning. And so, yeah. The journey. So, yeah. You guys, so I should ask right. Jody. You should ask Jody King. Oh, we should. You should. You know her. Amazing. Start with somebody yeah. you already got a relationship yeah, you with. You do. You have a connection to yeah. her. So, uh, what's hilarious is that I feel like you are our high reach. Like when she told me that you <laughs> yeah. said yes and we're coming on, I was like, yes. Oh my God, it was so amazing. She's Aww. so awesome. Like, we have made it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You're so kind. Thanks. Thanks. For, thanks for coming on and encouraging us to keep going and and we're settling in I think that we're getting a little bit more comfortable about just being ourselves and just having conversation and at first we both felt like we had to stick to it you know and just it was just you just we have such good conversations her and I all the time right. I mean so we used to actually have a talk before we did the live and we talk about everything and then we get on the live and be like well <laughs> we already talked about all that <laughs> yeah. But yeah and you know what there's so many interview shows out there that are you know interview question answer question answer yeah. sometimes it's, it's the same with Barbara and I we just like to have conversations imagine we're all sitting and having you know tea or a glass of wine and where'd the conversation go just meanders that's great that's yeah. good to know people yeah, yeah. well thank Love you Tamar. it we loved it. Thank oh, you. Right. You're a wealth of information and good luck on the rest of your art residency at home. And um, it's inspirational. I really want to be able to do that sometime too. I think All it's, right. it's awesome. Okay. You're We're cheering for publicly. you. Publicly. We're manifesting this for yeah. you now, Jeanette. <laughs> yeah. I would love it. It's coming. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank again for having so me. Much. Bye. Have an okay. Bye. Have an amazing day. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.